Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Bits of Architecture. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about RISC-V instructions. So as a bit of a refresher, what do our programs look like underneath the hood? So remember, our programs are really just a big long list of instructions that have been compiled down into machine code, right? And machine code is just the binary representation of our instructions. So our instructions are just ones and zeros being stored out into memory, right? So recall, we have this idea of a stored program computer. Now, the way that our instructions are encoded depends on our instruction format, right? And this is laid out by our instruction set. And this basically says, you know, how we interpret the different bits inside of our instructions. So, you know, which bits correspond to say, um, you know, what instruction it is, which bits correspond to say, uh, the registers that we're going to be choosing for inputs or for uh, the destination register, um, and, and things like that. So our instructions also operate on memory and our computers, of course, use quite a lot of memory. So it's important that we know a bit more of the terminology uh, surrounding memory and how we refer to different uh, subsets of bits. So we should all be familiar with a single bit, right? Just a single binary digit, but we typically group them into larger numbers of bits, right? Generally powers of two for convenience. So for example, we refer to four bits as a nibble, eight bits as a byte, 16 bits as a half word, and 32 bits as a word. And we even have say 64 bits, which would be called a double word. Now, just an important caveat here with things like uh, the size of our words, this is something that's actually processor dependent. So for example, you may find other modern processors that have a 64-bit uh, definition for their word, right? So their word size is 64 bits instead of 32 bits. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about our RISC-V instructions and some basics about this instruction set. So available to us, we have 32 registers, which are aptly named 0 through 31. And our instructions have a fixed length, right? And that's going to be 32 bits. So every single one of our instructions can be encoded with 32 ones and zeros. So we break up these 32 bits into different fields, right? And this says what our instruction is going to do, where our input's coming from, where our output's going, um, and so on and so forth. So for example, we have an opcode field, which says the operation of an instruction. So what instruction it is. Things like RD, which is our destination register, so where we're going to store the output inside of a register. Then we have these Funct3 and Funct7, um, which are 3-bit and 7-bit parts of our instruction, which are additional opcode fields. And then we have things like RS1 and RS2, which are first and second register source um, fields, right? So it basically says which register we're going to access um, for each of our you know, two inputs that we could have. And notice here, RS1 and RS2 and RD are all five bits, right? So we need five bits to access all 32 registers. Remember when we talked about the range of unsigned numbers, the range of five bits is going to be zero to two to the n minus one, right? So zero to 31 in this case. So that's why these register fields are five bits. Okay, so let's talk a bit about instruction formats, right? So can all instructions use the exact same format? Well, they can, but it's really tough to do this in a fixed length, right? Because not every single one of our instructions needs to use every single one of the fields, right? So for example, we have instructions that don't have, say, you know, register input operands. So those bits would be just kind of wasted. And it'd be really great if we could kind of allocate them elsewhere, right? To perform some other task or be interpreted rather in some other way. So we have a bit of a compromise inside of our instruction set. So for the sake of the simplicity of our hardware, right, we have to kind of balance things. Um, so in RISC-V, what we do is we have a fixed length for instructions. So we don't have to handle, say, variable length instructions. Every single instruction is 32 bits. But we add a little bit more complexity in terms of how we interpret um, those bits. So we end up having multiple formats. So we don't just have a single format for all of our instructions. We interpret these 32 bits in different ways depending on the instruction. And that's what we're going to be mainly focusing on in the latter half of this video, right? So what are these instruction formats, right? So RISC-V has six major instruction formats. The first one being the uh, first format that we saw up on the screen, which is, which is this R-type instruction. So this is a register type instruction where we have two register inputs and one register output. So we put both our, we have both our inputs 
in RS1 and RS2, and our output goes into RD, our destination register. So an example of this would be something like uh, a normal add instruction. So we add the contents of you know, RS1 and RS2, and we store that result into the register RD, right? Uh, whatever that register is in these five bits. Now, another type of instruction we have is an immediate type instruction. And this, these are instructions that use some immediate constant operand, right? So instead of having a value come from a register, it's directly encoded into the instruction. So for example, um, an add I instruction, an add immediate instruction. So we would add, say, the contents of, you know, whatever register RS1 with some immediate value. So, you know, five or 10, um, which is in this, uh, uh, the, the, these upper 12 bits of the instruction. And then we store the contents of, say, that addition into our destination register. Now, an important thing to note here is that we have a fixed number of bits for this immediate value. We only have 12 bits. So whatever value we want to encode here, right, it has to be able to fit within 12 bits. Okay, so another type of instruction we have is an S-type instruction. And this looks a lot closer to our um, R-type instruction format, right? So we have RS1, RS2. But instead of having a destination, we have an, an immediate. And you see we're using our upper seven bits, right, with the, where that func7 field was, also to store an immediate value, right? So our S-type instructions are our store-type instructions. So these are used for store operations. So we're taking something, say, from our registers, and we're storing it out into memory. So we need these extra bits um, for addressing into you know, what, where we're actually storing this within our memory space. So another type of instruction that we have, which is similar to our S-type instruction in terms of the format, are going to be these conditional branching instructions. Um, so we have a very similar breakdown or the same breakdown as our S-type instructions, but now we're interpreting those immediate values slightly differently, right? So um, instead of just, you know, and, or instead of, you know, calculating where we're going to store something into memory, with our conditional branch uh, instructions, we're deciding what part of the program we're going to branch to. So this would be, you know, something like a, you know, branch if some condition is true, right? Um, so we need to know where inside of our program memory we're going to jump to. So that's how we're reinterpreting these immediate bits, right? Less so as a part of memory that we're going to you know, store something to. Now it's going to be a part of our program memory we're going to jump to. Okay, so as a bit of a departure from those previous things, we have an, our U-type instruction, which are the uh, upper immediate instructions. So here we have a very large immediate field, so we can store a very large immediate value inside of this instruction, right, all 20 bits. And these are typically used for, say, our load and add upper immediate instructions. So when we're setting very large values or values that can't be encoded in, say, 12 bits, and we need to use, say, 20 bits or more or rather 20 bits here in this case. So, you know, we'll, we'll do this to say, set the upper 20 bits of, you know, say one of our registers, and then we'll have to patch up the rest with say, um, an add instruction or an add I instruction to set say the lower 12 bits. But these are used when we need very large immediate values. Um, okay. So our final type that we have are these UJ type instructions, right? And these are going to be our jump instructions. So something like a jump and link. So these are used when we want to jump someplace in a program memory. And this is uh, a, a, an unconditional jump. So we're not jumping based on something like a comparison, right? That like we talked about for SB type instructions. This is where we're just jumping say to some address or jump and link to some address. And uh, that's why we have this destination register here for that link part of the jump and link. Um, okay, so these are the main types of instructions that we have as part of, part of the core of RISC-V instructions. This, of course, is just a high-level overview of the different formats for these instructions. Um, you know, I'll leave the, you know, going through the entire instruction set of every single instruction and exactly what they do as an exercise to the reader, but we'll be using a number of them in, say, small programs moving forward. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.